Top of the morning out here, A shift patrol for vlog day today will be in Little Havana. Now, for those of you who have been watching the vlogs, you're definitely wondering what's going on with Gio's face. Yes, our department has changed their beard policy. You're gonna see a lot of City Miami cops now. We're gonna be rocking some beards, but we do have to keep it well groomed. You're not gonna see us growing it very, very long. So if you see the cops out here rocking the beards, now you know why. That's one of the things that have changed. So to get started, I'm gonna introduce you to a familiar face you haven't seen in a long time. We got office suppliers over here. Let's go. What's up everybody? Back on patrol. So guys, listen, I'm so happy Gio's here with me. Hopefully we'll have a nice uh, day today. I'm actually new to patrol. I haven't been on patrol in like seven years. Say what? Now, when Walt told me he was coming back to patrol, I was like, whoa, wait a second. I got to come ride with you. The last time we rode together, oh, my goodness, like 13 years ago, it had yeah. to be. Yeah. I was a, I was a rookie on Solo 1 and Solo 2. I just cut off the FTO, and he was like my mentor in downtown because I didn't really know what I was doing yet. And I was like, Walt, man, you got to help me get through these two months. And he was so great. He helped me out so much. It was a pleasure. I'm so happy to have you guys riding along with us as we ride together in Little Havana and go on patrol. You ready, brother? I'm ready. You ready? Let's do it, man. One of the first things I do is I go into service. I'm going to check my computer. We don't have anything in the morning. Little Havana is a little bit slow in the morning, but trust me, it's going to pick up. So right now, we're going to go over here, grab some fuel, and I don't drink coffee, but I got to get my drink of choice. So i see you guys there. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. So like I said, it's morning time here, Little Havana. I gotta have my coffee, which is just Red Bull. Me and coffee don't mix. Gio wouldn't like it. it nobody would like it. I probably wouldn't make it through the uh, through the morning. <laughs> but yeah, we're here in Little Havana. We're at 7-Eleven off of um, 12 Avenue and like 11th Street. This is like the hub for everybody coming in the morning. It's super busy here in the morning. So we just stopped through. Um, go and speak to the people really quick. Make sure everybody here is calm and cool because sometimes they get out of hand trying to get their Red Bulls. But good morning to you all. That's nice. That's nice. I haven't been on the road in seven years and so much has changed. We really don't even carry that much paperwork with us. Everything is done right here on the computer. But I'm still kind of old school and I still like to set up a, uh, a pad. So I set my pad up and I keep all my information here. God forbid it's not here or I miss something or I need to go back and reference it. I always still go old school with a nice pen and paper. You'll notice there are a couple of boxes. The first top hand box is actually what kind of call it is. I'll write it if it's a 34, which is a disturbance or a 19 or whatever signal they give me. And as far as the little the lines on the right hand side of the paper, those are my arrival times and my in-service times. It's a huge difference. We went from paper now <laughs> to electronic completely. Completely. The last time I wrote a report before I came back, it literally was everything was paper and now everything is electronic. There is no paper for us to submit our reports or even make an arrest right now. Everything is electronic. We use the uh, we use armbands now that link to the arrest system and link to our A forms. So when we take prisoners in, they scan the armband and everything pops up on the computer. So it's it's completely different now. Seventy three fifteen. Seventy one five. Mommy, show me going by with that unit. All right, we just one of our units that uh, worked the area with us. He just got a call for a uh, theft for retail, right? retail theft. Looks like a gas station and stole something. So we're gonna go by and see if we can locate the subject. Also help the unit out with the report. So basically what we have here is uh, an offender went inside, subject went inside, he stole something. When he was leaving, they magnetically locked the door. Uh, as he was exiting, he kind of pushed the door really hard and broke the magnetic lock. They don't want to do a report reference to stolen item, they just want something reference to the uh, broken door. So we're going to do a vandalism report and we're actually going to go around and check the area see if we can locate the offender. Seventy-three, fifteen. 19. It's gonna be Flagler and 14.
Now I observed the vehicle with a transport tag. When we ran the tag, it doesn't come back to anything. The driver doesn't have a driver's license and they have no insurance, nothing for the car, no registration, nothing. So unless we can find a person that that tag comes back to, I'll probably end up towing the vehicle and issue her a citation for NVDO. These transporter tags are registered to businesses. The businesses use them to transport the vehicle from like an auction or to go get it painted or to get work done on the car. She's actually using this, this tag for her personal use to get back and forth from her day-to-day -day life. That's not, that's, not a, that's not what it's there for. I guess her husband or boyfriend works for the shop and that's what she's using it for. Them. And she doesn't have a driver's license. She shouldn't even be driving the vehicle. So we're gonna issue a couple of tickets, like I said, and the weather's kind of crazy and we'll get her on our way because uh, someone's here to drive the vehicle now. So we got two tickets, one's for the insurance, one's for the, uh, the no valid driver's license. So she'll get these two tickets and then they'll be able to take the vehicle on to where they need to be. So when it rains, typically the calls slow down a little bit because people stay inside, they don't want to get wet. And as an officer, you know, you never want to be hungry. So we're going to take the time to go <laughs> grab a little bite to eat, make sure that we can uh, fuel up our personal fuel tanks yes. and uh, see, uh, see what else the day has in store for us. So as I mentioned before on previous vlogs that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we like to support the small businesses. They took a big hit, and one of the officers told me that the best Mexican in the area is a tacalito. So I'm here going to check out the tacos, see how it is. Really looking forward to it. So now that we're in between calls, we just do high visibility patrolling. We'll go in and out of the neighborhoods and you know, just make sure that the people see our vehicle. If anybody needs us, they can flag us down. If we see something suspicious, then we'll address it. Right now, you know, most of the people are back out. Um, schools are not open yet. I know a lot of parents are going, I can't wait for it to open. <laughs> I know I'm one of them. But uh, our restaurants, most of our restaurants have opened at a certain capacity. I'm not sure if it's 50 or 40%, but I know that they are allowing dining on the inside. Unfortunately, still, a lot of the parks are still closed. So as you just saw, we passed Domino Park. Domino Park is still closed. I know a bunch of the, uh, the old timers here that like to play dominoes are going crazy. 7315. Right now we just got dispatched to a, a crisis intervention call, which is a 56. The weather's been really bad. It just cleared up with the rain. So we couldn't be as proactive as we would like, as a lot of the uh, the guys would like us to be. Um, but like Gio said earlier, we're gonna go ahead to this call now. Um, they're saying that it's a request for a crisis intervention, which, you know, somebody may need a little bit of uh, mental help. Uh, crisis intervention, you're dealing with someone who has possibly not taking the medications we don't know what state of mind that they're in so you know we just need to go in there and assess the situation with an open mind and try to gather as much information as possible to make sure that the individual is safe and that we're safe as well hello hello hi hi how can i help you okay so we have this neighbor this guy no, he's not our neighbor a, a guy in this apartment he was living there with somebody that person ended his lease and the guy stayed so he's basically invading that property he doesn't even belong in the building okay. on top of that this guy i think is mental or he uses some drugs and he gets really crazy and he starts banging his door he's the apartment door from inside he, he's aggressive he opens a little bit the door and he insults us he says he's gonna kill us that he's gonna press charges on us for what? For disturbing us, for us calling the police. Has he ever been evicted? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Has he ever been evicted? No. Apparently he oh, came no, in no, with he the, just, he the just person that he's the person to stop his residence. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna to have to be evicted. Yeah. And we've had it, honestly, we've had it. That's gonna be a management issue. We can speak to him and try to resolve this today, but. Alex, you my lab.
doctors, the, uh, first of all, the police told me because I still are very civilized. Every type of doctor, the top doctor, top of the line doctor, you can imagine in your city, see me and assess me. But I, there's no problem here. from Little Havana, Officer Great showed up. He's also CIT certified, which means that he can go ahead and make the determination whether someone meets the criteria for the Baker Act, which actually the person did. That's correct. The Baker Act criteria, you know, you have to be a, a threat to yourself or others. He said a couple of things that raised the red flag. One was that he wanted to, you know, stay home because he doesn't want to hurt anybody because everybody's out to hurt him. And That's the totality of the circumstances being in an apartment building that he's not supposed to be in anymore because he doesn't yeah, technically his, his live brother, there. He, yeah, his brother moved out, so he shouldn't be living there anymore. No uh, electricity. No electricity, so right. the power was cut off already from his establishment, his, his so he's already neglected himself. He has no electricity, the refrigerator's not working, there's no food in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So just self-neglect is also a uh, cost to, to be in Baker acting. Uh, he made notions that, like, again, that people were making, were going out targeting him. They were following him. That he has been victim of identity theft. The neighbors were banging the door at all times just to wake him up specifically. That wherever he moves, it's just always the same thing. People are, are following him, making noise to wake him up and to keep him uh, up the whole time. Exactly. So it was at that point as officers, we have to say, you know what? He, he needs some help. He needs to get evaluated. We're not doctors, so we definitely have to take him to one. To make sure that he's okay, we want nobody to be hurt. That's correct. You know, especially him. You know. That's correct. That's the last thing we want to do is anybody hurt themselves or hurt others. Mm -hmm. So that's why we seek for them to get the help that they need. Again, Absolutely. we're not a medical doctor, so we we basically recommend them to go mm -hmm. and let the doctors make the determination, the final determination of uh, what to do with them. Absolutely. So we're gonna go ahead, buyers and I. We're gonna take them to crisis. A great went ahead and he's uh, finished up with the paperwork. So we're gonna head on there, head over there now. Done. All right, guys, so we just finished transporting him to JMH. Uh, one of the things in police work is sometimes you're going to go over your yeah. hours, and, and yeah, we're already and past our 06 time. we definitely time. did that. But, like, like we did, we, we, we built a good rapport with him, and we didn't just want to pass him off to another unit. It's okay if I stay a couple minutes over just so this, this gentleman gets the help that he needed. At one point, you know, we were trying to talk to him, trying to talk him down, trying to calm him down. But he just felt like everybody was out to get him. He starts telling us how he's hearing things from upstairs. Nobody stayed above him. Um, even found out that the power, the lights, and everything was off in the apartment. So at that point, we felt like he was a danger to himself. Then we had family members also telling us, hey, listen, can you please get him some help? We're not there. We can't come. And then finally, we did get a family member show up who was able to get the, the dog and take care of the dog and lock up the apartment. So hopefully this gentleman will get the help that he needs. And you know, actually I feel really good about the call. You know? Absolutely, this is one of those calls where it started off where he was really, really, you know, not trusting the police, didn't want us around, and was being very difficult with us in the beginning. And it was, it was, it was evident that he, you know, was suffering from some kind of a mental illness. And hopefully now he really does get that treatment that he needs to be evaluated because his family saying that he's never been evaluated, so yeah. they don't even know what's wrong with him. Yeah, so he, he definitely needs some help, but he's in the right place now, and absolutely, you know, hopefully, next time when we get a call, it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. But he seems like he's a nice guy overall. And yeah, yeah, he actually told us both. Yeah. You know, thank you guys, and have a great day. Be safe. Absolutely. That was the last thing he said to us. Absolutely. So, so guys, we're gonna get out of here. We'll catch up with Pyres at another time. It's great to see him. Good riding with him. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a good one. See you guys later.